Welcome to Ghana 411. This week we take a look at education and government's holistic approach through initiatives and programs aimed at transforming the education system. Stay tuned. As the coalition government seeks to overcome the challenges and launch new initiatives for the enhancement of the education system, a proper infrastructure will enable comfortable learning environments. Guyanese youths will be given the chance to be creative, skilled and ambitious as well as qualified, says Minister within the Ministry of Education, Nicholas Henry. This vision for youth development will be made possible through budgetary allocations. Well-designed, constructed, equipped, and maintained schools that inspire and facilitate learning are critically important to the coalition government's plans for improving the quality of education in Guyana. To improve school infrastructure, the coalition government is focusing on constructing new schools, rehabilitating schools that are in disrepair, expanding learning spaces in overcrowded schools, and improving sanitary facilities, equipment, and school furniture. Government will spend $4.3 billion on improving education infrastructure this year. New buildings will be constructed for Southwood Nursery, Peters Hall Primary, Golden Grove and Aurora Secondary, and number 36 primary and secondary schools. In education, uh, we are building a new school at number 36 village there, a new primary school, nursery and primary. Right now we have over 200 students there. Uh, in the primary and we have about 60 in the nursery level. But what is happening, the population is building there over time and so we are catering for school that will probably hold about 450 students uh, at any one time. So even with a increase in population and movement of people because there is a big industry around there, the, right, the, uh, there's a, the biggest mill, rice mill that we have in the region is located at 36 village. So there's a likelihood too that people might move towards closer place of employment. And so there is need to have uh, a school that is uh, capable of taking on additional children in the future. In terms of rehabilitating, this year we'll see the focus on schools such as the Parfait Harmony Nursery, St. Stephen's Primary and St. Rose's High. Expanding learning spaces in overcrowded schools will see government focusing on reducing class sizes by building additional classrooms in the existing schools of Bishops High, Wakapo Secondary and Agatash Primary. The completion of the Cato Secondary Complex, which is intended to ease the overcrowding at Parmakatoy and provide full secondary education for many students in primary tops, is also included in this program. The contractual period is up on June the 2016, um, there are independent auditors right now as we speak in with a contractor and a consultant. There were several severe defects. Um, as the member asked, the 60% 60 60 of the um, tests done on the concrete failed. The, uh, uh, a further 30% um, was um, just borderline and only 10% passed. Um, that was done independently. The independent consultants, contractor, and the Ministry of Education are up there right now to see what rectifications can be done. Meanwhile, rehabilitation and construction of water, sanitation, and hygiene facilities are targeted for the Northwest and Port Kaituma Secondary Schools and the Annandale North and Enterprise Nursery. Focus will also be on the upgrading of technical institutes and training centers and the entire University of Guyana to ensure that it produces quality graduates. Our commitment to UG stems from our appreciation of the critical role a university plays in supporting knowledge-driven economic growth strategies and fostering democratic, socially cohesive societies. In 2016, Mr. Speaker, we have allocated $3.2 billion, a 52% increase in the subvention to the University of Guyana to make it... as a first step to making the university a true institution of higher learning. The government will continue to support this vital institution 
created just three years before formal independence was granted to Guyana by doing all that is necessary to give Guyana a university that will secure economic and cultural independence. It is both a barometer of and a, and a critical factor in determining the quality of our nationhood. There will be the extension of workshops at the Essequibo Technical Institute, rehabilitation of facilities at the George Dung Technical Institute, and construction of classrooms at the Upper Quarantine Technical Institute. The coalition government recognizes that the nature and condition of education infrastructure contribute to schools' effectiveness. Therefore, it will continue to work to strengthen educational facilities nationwide. Shivani Ramposad tells us that satellite teacher training centers are to be established in Kokwani, Kamarang, Maraikabai and Charity to boost teachers' capacity. The government is placing additional emphasis on teachers' training, which is expected to improve the quality of education delivery. During the 2016 National Budget presentation, Finance Minister Winston Jordan addressed the gaps in the sector that will be addressed in 2016. The results of the performance of our children examinations point to critical gaps in the quality in delivery of education. One key component is the area of teacher training. Last year, 506 trained teachers were added to the education system, and another 415 teachers will be added this year. Further, additional satellite centers in Kokwani, Kamarang, Morakobai, and Charity will be established to increase the number of trained teachers in the hinterland and riverine areas. Music and sports will also be receiving much attention. There are plans for the expansion of the music program to an additional 80 primary schools. In the 2016 budget, provisions were made for music education to be introduced in the country's 10 administrative regions. This will see the procurement of recorders which will benefit 800 grade 3 pupils. I think to the extent that they have schools that do it, I mean, I haven't been able to make as careful an assessment of, of the performance so far. But what I know is that um, sports and, and, and music, I believe, they need to be integrated really into the curriculum. They're not something you do when you, you, know, you have time or something you put aside for Friday afternoons, but it's something that is integrated, that we get the children singing again in the schools. Schools that are already, you know, have active music programs, that's absolutely great and we should emulate those schools and develop it throughout. Sports as well, I mean, you know, it's shocking to me. I, mean, I, I, I went to school at a time when, you know, we had the three cricket pitches active on juicy ground. Um, I pass now and, I mean, you know, frankly, even a self-respecting cow would, would hesitate to enter a pasture like that. So my interest is seeing all of these facilities being refurbished. And uh, I would like, you know, every single school to have, you know, the, the, the capacity and the wherewithal and the physical requirements to ensure that phys ed and sports come back into the school in a big way. Teachers' salaries are also set to be increased, but government is still in consultation with the Guyana Teachers' Union. In 2015, the Cyril Potter College of Education had its largest intake of approximately 750 trainees. The mentorship and induction program for new teachers have been embedded in the system with widespread and consistent monitoring in all regions. Teachers' training has also been expanded to Kokwani, Charity and Madhya to ensure underqualified and untrained teachers receive the necessary capacity building. Developing well-rounded students in the use of information communication technology, ICT and smart classes are also on the government's front burner. Shanaza Lu tells us more. The utilization of ICT in education will have a significant impact on Guyana's youth development. Delma Ned, permanent secretary for the Ministry of Education, says that the education strategic plan will help in facilitating this goal. The government over the past, I would say about four to five years, because we have our current education strategic plan, 2014-2018, and in that plan, our mandate is to have 100% of our secondary schools equipped with computers and 50% of our primary schools equipped with 
computers and accessories. Secondary schools are already 100% equipped and currently 20% of primary schools are furnished with computers and accessories. The One Laptop Per Teacher initiative is being implemented which will allow teachers to be better equipped in delivering the ICT curriculum, according to the Minister of Education, Dr. Rupert Rupnarain. I mean, we need, to, we need to bring the teachers to a point where, um, you know, access to access to online learning, distance learning, I mean, all of the techniques available in, in terms of um, you know, computer literacy and so on. We bring teachers really to a point where they can, you know, as I say, catch up with the children, because a lot of the children are already there. Additionally, government's emphasis in initiating interest at a young age in science, technology, engineering and mathematics, STEM, is another method which aims to create well-rounded learners. Emphasis on these subjects will allow students to develop innovative, effective, and sustainable solutions to the challenges in communities. We're hoping that to create a sort of inquiry method of learning where children will be curious about things around them, curious about science, by our teachers and students finding innovative way of teaching maths. We, not, we don't want them to find a new formula or anything, but if they could find new ways of teaching maths, probably by games or some other way, then we're hoping that our pass rate in maths and generally your overall performance as a sector, education sector that is, would improve. Additionally, children are being trained to use tablets and computers, and smart classrooms are also part of the government's continuing efforts to produce well-rounded learners. In this next feature, we look at the government's education support system aimed at increasing enrollment and positively impacting students' attendance and performance in schools. Traveling far distances to school by foot can result in children being physically exhausted and negatively impacting their attendance and punctuality in school, thereby limiting their access to education. Addressing this issue, government introduced the 3 Bs initiative boats, buses, and bicycles in 2015. This year, the program has been expanded to include books and breakfast. Additionally, to ensure children are adequately outfitted for school, 28,000 pairs of footwear will be distributed in the first quarter of 2016, primarily in the hinterland and riverine areas. The sum of $424.2 million was allocated in the national budget to continue the school uniform program, which will benefit over 200,000 children in the coastland and hinterland regions. Additionally, over 7,000 more hinterland students will benefit from the hot meal program, for which $1.9 million will be expended. In 2015, our Hot Meals program was expanded to include four schools in Region 7, namely Precious Gems Nursery, Beachview Nursery, Hillview Nursery, and Future Builders Nursery. With regards to transportation, His Excellency would have strategically commissioned five boats for use in Region 2, Pomeroon, Region 4, Demra River, Region 5, Maikoni River, and Region 10, the Burbese River. In 2016, we expect that under the 3B initiative, the critical gap in access to education will continue to be addressed. The holistic approach to education in Guyana will see the Ministry of Education rolling out a program to reintegrate teenage mothers into the school system. There will also be support programs in schools and residential facilities countrywide to tackle the social issue of suicide among young people. Moreover, teachers will be trained to lend support to the school's welfare officers and separate classrooms will be made available at schools to facilitate counseling sessions for both parents and students. Thanks for watching Ghana 411. Do join us again next week. Remember, you can contact us on Facebook or YouTube. Remember, let us all conserve water and protect yourself and the family from mosquitoes to prevent vector-borne diseases. Thanks again for watching.